Welcome to Holly EFI Training Part 30. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our closed loop style boost control. Now, in a previous video, we went through the open loop style boost control. It was relatively simple, where we commanded a certain amount of duty cycle to the boost solenoid and achieved a certain amount of boost. Now, with the closed loop style control, we're going to be telling the Holly what kind of correlation there is between the duty cycle and the target boost level. We can program our target boost level in various functions based on time, speed, gear, and many other programming functionalities in order to achieve the traction and the boost control that we're after. Now, the most important thing in here is that we're implementing now what's known as a proportional integral and derivative style control. So the PID values have to be programmed right so that the Holly is going to be reacting to the difference between the actual and the target boost levels and starting to adjust our base duty cycle that we would go through and program that we're going to learn about in this video so that our duty cycle is going to be getting us to the target boost and holding there very precisely. The closed loop boost control is great for various different kinds of elevation changes or temperature changes. It's going to keep our boost delivery extremely consistent. So we may want to work with this on your race application. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can learn how to work with our closed loop style boost control. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to take a look at working with our closed loop style boost control using our Holly EFI software. In our previous training tutorial, we took a look at the open loop style boost control. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is going to now introduce a closed loop aspect to the control where we're going to give the Holly a target to reach and boost. It's going to compare to our actual boost pressure that we're running, and it's going to make adjustments to the duty cycle that we're sending out to the boost solenoid. So I'm going to go over some of the exact same things that we had in the previous video in case you skipped over that open loop style boost control and you're jumping right into this closed loop control so that you're familiar with setting up and configuration of all the small details to make sure that the boost control is going to work right in closed loop method. So first and foremost, let's jump in here to our toolbox. Let's go here into add individual config and move down here into our second folder option called boost. We click on this, we're gonna find we have our dual port wastegate or our single port wastegate option. We're gonna choose single port wastegate, single solenoid and click open. Now at the top, we're gonna to have a compressor icon here that's gonna be our boost ICF. We wanna click on this and on the left hand side, we're gonna find all of our options now open up that we can start to adjust. So let's go through our system setup here and make sure this is configured right. Then we're gonna be talking about configuring the boost solenoids for an internal or an external wastegate to make sure that we have those set up and configured properly so that the boost control is gonna work. So first and foremost up top here, system setup, wastegate type, we see single port, or dual port dome pressure control. We're going to be choosing single port in this option. We're gonna have another training tutorial dedicated to doing dome pressure control because the concept is a bit different than other engine management systems and other boost control routines. So single port is what we wanna choose right now. The solenoid configuration, we can find we have some options here. We find the Holly three port with the part number. We find a Humphrey three port. This is gonna be another common option. And then finally custom. Now. If at all possible, use the Holly 3 port with this part number. It takes care of getting the frequency right as well as the dead time information for the solenoid that you're using, which will make a difference in closed loop style control. If we go to custom, we're going to see at the bottom here, this appears. This is going to be the dead time or the response time from the solenoid. So if you think about how a fuel injector is going to be controlled, we talked about the dead time or the latency for a fuel injector. Each injector type is going to have a unique type of offset dead time or latency, whatever you want to call it. And that's going to be uh, making or breaking the way the fuel delivery is going to be working in your main fuel table when you're tuning. Same is going to go here for the boost control. So by going in and choosing either option here, the three port Holly or the Humphrey three port, it's going to be taking into account the correct frequency and the correct dead time scale here. Now, if you are using something like an AM three port boost solenoid or a generic Mac three port boost solenoid, the frequency is going to be 30 Hertz, but the dead time here may be different. So be aware of that as you're entering in and working with the boost control. Let's jump back here to the Holly single three port solenoid option right here. And then the control method, we're gonna find we have map pressure or open loop duty cycle. Now, in this case, we're gonna be choosing map pressure. That signifies that we're looking at the manifold pressure for the target 
and we're not going to just be running in this basic duty cycle open loop control that we found in the last video. So we'll select map pressure. Operation mode doesn't matter right now. We'll keep it in boost versus time. We'll talk about the various different kinds of boost control routines we have here. And then finally, we have our use master enable input. Now, this is going to be a master toggle switch. Turn on or off the boost control function. It's going to act as an override. If we toggle this on, we're able to turn off our boost control completely by going in here to our input outputs, going into master enable, going and choosing what kind of switch type we're working with, ground or 12 volt, and then changing the ECU pin and defining it up here in our pin map. We went through how to do that. I should be familiar with uh, going, in, going in and, and assigning that pin. Uh, in this point in the training course. So I'm going to skip over that. I typically don't use that master enable option. But Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.